Good night, good night, good night, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Jassel After Dark. Reminding you, we are in season 12, and this is episode 3. I'm your host, Calvin. And of course, I'm excited to be here for Candid Conversations every Wednesday night at 8 p.m., live on YouTube and live on TikTok. Jassel After Dark is brought to you by Jamaica Aid Support for Life, and you can follow us on all our social media platforms. It's a new season. And of course, if you've been following us, you know that I have a new co-host with me. So welcome, Crystal Wagwan. Hey, Calvin. Hey, ladies and gentlemen. It's your girl, Crystal, the drama teacher. And from your ear, drama, you know, so when I have to say nothing more, I'm the hostess who's always doing the hostess. You'll get used to me. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes. But you know, it's a, it's a nice vibe. I'm with Crystal here. You know, we have a good time. So seeing a new face you know oh. our guest in the middle and you're probably wondering who is with us tonight mm -hmm. right but you see the topic for tonight's discussion we'll be discussing the topic lgbtq plus sex ed what they didn't teach us in school mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and to share in tonight's discussion we have with us executive director of equality ja glenroy murray welcome oh on the phone nice <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for having me, uh, and thanks for having this discussion. I mean, I think it's amazing that we're talking about this, especially because for a lot of members of our community, um, it's a reality that we were not prepared for the world that we are thrust in for all sorts of policy, legislative, mm -hmm. and just social reasons. So it's good that we're creating space where people can talk about this. Absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely. But before we get into tonight's discussion, it's time for Hot Pot. <laughs> All right, so there are always some topics that are interesting and somewhat controversial. So each week, we dip into our hot pot to find a topic to discuss. And of course, our guest, Glenn Roy, is going to dip into our hot pot and find something steaming when we talk about it. Not the steaming the pot. pot adds, the pot, adds, uh, the pot whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> 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 Whatever it is. Yeah, so dip in, in, in the pot. Yeah, yeah. Uh, too fast, it's not burning you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, no, sorry, you get <laughs> burned right. a long time. All right. You have a teeth one dump in your teeth two. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I'm agreed that way there. <laughs> All right. So this says, for years, women have been scrutinized for not having kids or even being married. In recent times, women have been vocal about choosing careers instead of having husbands and children. Do you think this is normal? Or do you believe that women should get married and have children? Hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, first of all, yeah. as a homosexual, this is really... None of my business. <laughs> and Is I don't sit this one out. Really, it's not for the women. <laughs> However, yes. um, I've never been one to. Well, first of all, I don't believe in the institution of marriage from a legal perspective. Mm -hmm. um, my background is in law, and it just doesn't make a lot of legal sense. And it definitely doesn't make a lot of legal sense in the context of Jamaica, where we already recognize unmarried relationships. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So for me, marriage is neither here nor there. Um, but. I think why should we, it shouldn't matter whether or not women want to get married and have children. I know there's a lot of conversation now right. about, you know, the replenishment rate and fertility rate going mm -hmm. down. But I don't think that's just on women. I think there is a lot of, there are a lot of issues in Jamaica, mm -hmm. economics, society, and people realizing that parenting is a really big responsibility. Mm -hmm. And I want to just jumping at it so and i think there's a lot that we need to fix before we start pressure the woman them for breed so again I, i'm going to be the devil's advocate of course. Right. so <laughs> if we look at it and we look biologically and we're like okay you know cis women they have the well many have the ability to give birth mm -hmm. so if they don't take it, the responsibility upon themselves to give birth well, and to keep the you know the population striving then 
what happens? You, shouldn't they see it as their duty? Like, you know, this is my duty to Mother Earth to give birth. Not Mother Earth. <laughs> <laughs> Mother, Mother Earth, you go. <laughs> Yeah, no, I think you can answer that one. <laughs> First of all, the patrolling of women's bodies need to stop, okay? Um, gone are the days when we're home, mm-hmm. you know, cleaning the house, sewing, cleaning, clean. That part day, we are not going to get the reach there. <laughs> Yeah, remember when your grandfather did have 13 women and have 25 children? We're not doing that yeah. anymore, you understand? And we're evolving. Absolutely. So I firmly believe that when it comes down to this, I love the fact, what I appreciate is that you're like, listen, this not nothing to do with me. I just step out of the <laughs> Because so many men, especially ha- being a mother, mm-hmm. if you know how traumatic it is to have a child, I went to 22 hours of labor. I'm not telling nobody to my that again. <laughs> I had to have C-section. And they were like, oh, you know. Um, would you like to get six more hours of labor? And I was like, no, take them out right yeah. now. So it's not just on, not even the mental health aspect, the postpartum depression and stuff like that. Real. We go through a lot yeah. when the man them sit out the saggy bun. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. girl, go live your life, uh, buy a car, have a career, do what you need to do. Yeah, Glenn, yeah, because I think also, I think what we're missing from this conversation is the reality that a modern times now, really, there are different ways that we can form and create families. Mm-hmm. And actually in Jamaica, we've always had different ways. We just stuck on this nuclear idea. Enough people grew up in communities where somebody else other than their biological mother raised them. Mm-hmm. Um, that happens in my biological family where somebody from outside has been going with my mom for years and she's in high school now and mm-hmm. she's doing well because mommy have the infrastructure to provide that kind of support. We've been under that for years in Jamaica. So I don't think our concern about having families and raising families is limited to just, oh, the woman have to breed. Mm-hmm. Also, you yeah, have reproductive technologies now. We can talk about one surrogacy, we mm-hmm. can talk about adoption, we can talk about a range yeah. of things mm-hmm. if our concern is reproduction. But if we're talking about motherhood and pregnancy, we really have to ask, sit with men and women mm-hmm. um, and see why they must say, I make a whole lot of this a little. Because there are bigger things that put women in that position yeah. that we need to address And, and speaking yeah. of bigger things, you know, it's after dark and we are, we are taught the things then. So, here, my question is, do you think Jamaica is anywhere closer to being at the place where we can have same-sex parents adopting? Since we're talking about LGBTQ plus uh, issues tonight. Mm. You, you, so, the soft <laughs> answer to that is, <laughs> technically, mm-hmm. under our laws, there's nothing that prevents mm-hmm. that. It's mm-hmm. just that, only married couples can adopt. We can't get married, so we can't adopt as a couple. But a mm-hmm. single man or a single woman can adopt a child and um, by themselves and then raise it however, with whomever they would want to raise it with. Mm-hmm. Of course, they might have to go through the long, painstaking adoption process yeah. in Jamaica. Mm-hmm. Um, but it is technically possible. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't think we're there yet, only because there are a lot of other legal protections Absolutely. that I think that mm-hmm. people need because, you know, uh, take up the, the, the responsibility of parenting mm-hmm. and then you can just lose your job just like that but just because you're from a certain community. So I think we need other protections to make sure that LGBT people aren't at certain risks mm-hmm. before we say, all right, Adoption. Adoption, yeah. yeah. And yeah. parenting is a full-time job. It absolutely, is. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, remember, our viewers, you can share your thoughts with us in the comments. Let us know. Type it on YouTube or right here on TikTok. And let us know what you think about this question. So, you know, after Hot Pot, if you've been following us, you know, up next, we have Prep Up.
All right, so if you're just joining us, you know you're tuned in to Jastle After Dark, brought to you by Jamaica Aid Support for Life. And this is episode three in season 12. For the last two weeks, we've been, we've have had our new segment, Prep Up, where we've been giving you doses of information on PrEP. And tonight, we're joined by one of our very own doctors, Dr. Stephen Andrews, who will be talking to us tonight about accessing PrEP. Dr. Andrews, welcome back to Jastle After Dark. Pleasure. All right, so my first question right away. What is the first step someone should take if they're interested in starting PrEP? So anyone who is interested in taking PrEP needs to be uh, informed about it. They mm -hmm. have to have some sort of idea about it. Where would you get any information about PrEP? JASL. Mm -hmm. JASL is one of the best places that you can come to see a doctor, even other personnel that can give you enough information about PrEP mm -hmm. to see if you're eligible or if you're in the right place to start taking prep yeah all right so last week we, we touched on eligibility but a quick recap are there any specific requirements or screenings someone needs to complete before they can start prep i'm glad you asked the first thing you have to do before you start prep is make sure that your hiv is negative you can't start prep if you have hiv because the medicines that we use for prep are not the same medicines that we use to treat hiv mm -hmm. all right so once we have a negative HIV test, uh, we would basically take it from there. You talk to them in the office to see if you're in a place of uh, preparedness, like you're mentally ready to mm -hmm. take medicines every day yeah. to, before we decide that you can start prep. So you spoke about in the office. You know, how can people find healthcare providers in Jamaica that provide prep? So the best places to come for prep, in my opinion, mm -hmm. is just so. Wait, say that again? In my opinion, is just no. Yeah, we start from the top. Right. The best place. The best yeah. place. <laughs> <laughs> the best place that I would consider mm -hmm. to start prep or seeking information about prep is Jasso, mm -hmm. and we're in more than one parish. There's Jasso in Kingston, there's Jasso in Saint Anne, and there's Jasso in Montego Bay. Right. And even if you don't want to come to Jasso, the best place to come is Jasso. There are other places, <laughs> there are other places as well that the Ministry of Health has provided that mm -hmm. is on their website that you can check up to see if it's available in the parish near you. All right. So when you know prep is medication, when it comes down to medication, a question persons are going to ask is insurance. Does my insurance cover this, bro? Let me tell you, prep mm -hmm. costs two thousand two hundred U.S. dollars per bottle in mm -hmm. America. Yeah. And that's, for, and that's for a month's supply? Yes, that's for a month's supply. Mm -hmm. You know how many things we could do with $2,200? A, a whole lot. Exactly. Our government has been so supportive, it's heavily subsidized the cost of PrEP in Jamaica that it has made PrEP free. Mm -hmm. So you can get PrEP for free at JASO, mm -hmm. uh, as well as other healthcare, uh, Ministry of Health areas. Sites, yeah. site, sites like, like you just said. Mm -hmm. But there are private pharmacies that can provide prep for you at a at a low cost but like i said if you're given if you're getting it for free adjust so why would why you go any, anywhere exactly. else all right free is not always better but in this case it, it is, is better <laughs> <laughs> okay so can you explain you know the role of community organizations like what jasa is um, in helping people access prep have you ever met anyone that has come to jasa and had such a terrible experience you've written it off completely I've never I can't think of anyone. anyone. Mm -hmm. And if you are one of those people, I'm sorry. But just like how you're giving your ex a second chance, you should give us a second chance. All right? So JASA provides a community where mm -hmm. it's able to inform, empower, collaborate, engage, mm -hmm. and dispel myths. It creates that kind of homey feeling because yeah. it's not just that place where you sit in an office, you talk to somebody, and it's transactional, as mm -hmm. in you come in one, in one out. Yeah. We form a relationship with you. We know your mother, your brother, your uncle, your sister, if that need be. Whatever, you know, the issues are you're going through. And we make mm -hmm. it a more connectable, uh, like, like a better connection. Yeah. So that when you come here, you don't feel like it's just a transaction. Mm -hmm. So that's why I think JASO is one of those community, uh, what provides th th that community Co engagement. Yeah, yeah, right, right. To like make a, a family. Correct. To, mm -hmm. make, to make this less mundane and less less of a feeling that you're coming to a doctor for pills yeah it's more of a checkup a social checkup right our patients sit and talk to us about more than just health mm -hmm. and we're on a level with our patients where i wouldn't even call them patients because some of these people have become our friends 
right? Where they can call us, reach out to us, and, and discuss things even outside of their mm -hmm. sex life or health. health right. So that's what, that's, that's what the meaning of community is mm -hmm. for us. Absolutely. So what advice would you give to someone who feels, you know, hesitant or unsure about approaching a healthcare provider for PrEP? The most, the most common thing that you would find that would bring about hesitancy mm -hmm. in anyone doing anything is lack of information. If you don't know, then you can't make an informed decision. Right. And people tend to make decisions. People, people tend to make decisions mm -hmm. based on what they, what they uh, believe. Yeah. So what they know and what they believe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so, in doing so, I would basically let someone know that. Uh, I really <laughs> turned off. I really got on a uh, off train a while ago, mm -hmm. but I was saying people make decisions based on what they know believe, and what they believe. Correct. Right. So, if people get are empowered, they come here, they learn about prep, then they are able to make better decisions regarding prep. So that's one of the things that I would say would help you to be more sure about starting prep. All right. So that's it for this week's prep up segment, you know, you, where we give you a dose of information on prep. Thank you again, Dr. Andrews, yeah, for Dr. giving the people the details, yeah, the information that they need to know. So reminder, prep is available at Jamaica Aid Support for Life and as Doc says, it's for free. So contact us to learn more about prep. Stay tuned for more Just Love After Dark coming to you. Just a dark. Brought to you by Jamaica Aid Support for Life on YouTube and TikTok. So you can contact Jamaica Aid Support for Life to get tested for HIV and syphilis. And if you are living with HIV, contact us to start treatment. And if you are HIV negative but at risk of contracting HIV, let's talk about getting you on PrEP. And if you were here earlier, you know you would have heard that conversation with Dr. Andrews about PrEP and you know, getting on prep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but if they miss it, they can go on YouTube yeah. to rewatch. Absolutely. All right, that means they must leave, you know? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. So we have with us Executive Director of Equality Jamaica, Glenroy Murray, who will be sharing in our discussion on LGBTQ plus sex ed, what they didn't teach us in school. Welcome again. All right. No. I've been I've been meaning to ask this question. Mm. Okay. What does each letter <laughs> mean? <laughs> uh, LGBTQIA plus. plus. Oh, the easy one. Okay. <laughs> not, not, not the two S and uh -huh. no, I don't even know what two S mean. Um, mm -hmm. And I'll give them that as a bonus. Yeah. Um, but it, it, it's it's up a little bit, you know. Yeah. And, and, and how do these identities differ from one another? What? I mean, as you explain. Mm -hmm. yeah. So L. And so we can start with the vanilla four. Yeah. So <laughs> L. Uh, <laughs> oh, the vanilla four. Okay. Yeah, and, and that me ca that may call it for, for the purposes mm. of this conversation. So that's a lesbian. Mm. Um, so a woman loving a woman, or a person who identifies as a woman and loving mm. a woman, or mm -hmm. some people who don't necessarily identify as women, but still consider themselves lesbians because maybe they're non-binary, but you know mm. they're in women loving relationships. Mm. Um, you have G for gay, so men loving men, um, in the simplest of terms. 
um, bisexual people, people who love two genders, um, trans persons, which are people who identify with a gender other than the gender they were assigned at birth, mm -hmm. as opposed to cisgender people like myself who identify with the same gender that we were assigned at birth. And we say it like that, recognizing that when the doctor says it's a boy, it's a girl, the doctor doesn't know no. what's happening psychologically. So mm -hmm. the doctor does go through a process of saying, this is who you are. And then you come to that discovery as you grow up and as you react to whether or not you feel OK mm -hmm. with the gender socialization that you have or you don't feel OK with it. So your mom putting you in pants and say, no, this is not for me. Or if she putting you in the pants and say, no, this is for me. So that's, how, that's why we use the framing yeah. gender assigned at birth. Mm -hmm. So that's how the LGBT we will know more mm -hmm. for years now. Mm -hmm. Q is queer or questioning. Um, questioning because some people don't necessarily readily identify with, um, with no. well, yes, they readily mm -hmm. identify with the letters and they're still figuring out who they are. Mm -hmm. And so they're, they're, we consider that questioning. And queer used to be a slur that referred to gay men and, mm -hmm. and, and, queer, and just queer people generally, but it's now a broader umbrella term to refer to people who are go against the grain, are not necessarily mm -hmm. cisgender and heterosexual. So it's, I mean, it's the shorthand for me when I talk about the community, because we can't just queer people, because mm -hmm. it's broad, broad right. as opposed to go through all the letters all the time and accidentally miss one. Mm -hmm. um, eyes for intersex people. And when we talk about intersex, we acknowledge that um, even though most people um, have characteristics that are generally considered Binary. biologically mm -hmm. male or biologically or female, 2% female. Yeah. of the world's population is intersex, meaning they have something at the genetic, chromosomal, or, or, or phenotypical level that is a mixture hi, hi, of... Hi, hi. Right, hold on. Sorry. We know what it means, no, but... We know, know but... but, 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 but <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, yeah. all right. Germs. So, either at the hormone level mm -hmm. or maybe... Yeah, sex organs. Yes. So um, things we can't see. Yeah. yeah. We're, what we're seeing is somebody presenting somewhere in between male and female. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's a spectrum. Mm -hmm. um, I actually uh, met an amazing intersex advocate from Brazil the other day. Well, not the first time meeting them, saw them again. Mm -hmm. um, and then you have A for ace people or asexual persons. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, those, and that's for people who don't necessarily necessarily mm -hmm. experience um, sexual orientation at all. They will still have sex, depending on the relationships that they're in, but mm -hmm. they don't generally um, have sexual uh, attraction. Sexual attraction, attraction. Yeah, yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So how can someone determine? Wait, well, and the plus part. Oh, the plus. Oh, yeah, yeah. The plus. Yeah, sorry. So <laughs> the plus. Right. Yeah. So plus acknowledges that there are other identities mm -hmm. um, out there. Some people consider themselves demisexual, for example, mm -hmm. which are ace people who... Demi? Demi. Like just pizza. Okay. No, so no. it's eight people on the ace spectrum who have uh, to develop certain connections. emotional connection before mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Any, anything sexual can develop in terms mm -hmm. of their attraction. Oh, so okay. they're demisexual, halfway to ace okay. type of. Mm -hmm. ah, okay. Right. Um, and then they're pansexual, so people who are attracted to all genders. And not pans, because right. I know some people. Yeah, and so there, so there are different, word, there are mm -hmm. different identities yeah. out there that people use and adopt. I mean, they're non-binary people as well that mm -hmm. generally fall under the trans umbrella. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, they have certain specific realities. Mm -hmm. um, and then we, have, we talk about the two, two, uh, two, yeah. two, two S, yeah. two spirit people. So... The reason why LGBT... <laughs> I'm yeah, confused. Come, yeah. Not come, not come. Work with me, work with me. Follow yeah, me. all right. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'm yeah. still yeah. up in a class. So, yes. The reason why uh -huh. we talk about LGBT broadly is that we're using terms that have been developed mostly mm -hmm. in Western countries. Right. Um, and we have to acknowledge that. Mm -hmm. However, gender variance, meaning people having gender outside of the binary, has existed for years and years Absolutely. and years. Sure. And in um, Native American and, and Canadian First People communities, they've always had that term mm -hmm. for those people who exist outside of the binary, and it's called being two-spirit. Uh -huh. So in Canada, you won't just say LGBTQ, you're seeing the two S there, mm -hmm. and it's going to be there first, because they acknowledge that those people were around before we got to the LGBTQ. Mm -hmm. But it's important to understand mm -hmm. that people with gender variance exists across the world. So in, for example, Hawaii and other Polynesian territories, you have Mahu people, you have Faka Fafina, Faka Leti. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> <laughs> so Faka Fafina are mm -hmm. from Samoa. Mm -hmm. Faka, okay. Faka Leti are from Tonga. Um, Hijra, even though they're more 
intersects and trans. They're from like Indian South Asian communities. Mm -hmm. So there have always been people globally. We need one pen. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't know how we come a sex and class. I, I right? would have been How would I bring a bad student? Bad uh -huh. student. <laughs> so and so it's important for us to recognize that those indigenous identities exist. Because for example, so I have colleagues who are Samoan or Fijian, mm -hmm. and when they talk about their experience in their countries, they're not using LGBT. They're talking about being um faka lady or lady for short or faka fafina. Um and how, so how much time you practice them right? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 oh, you know, I just want yes, come in. I'm not saying that I'm They're on the enough. Yeah. I'm going to make sure I'm going to say it right. I'm not going to offend nobody. Faka Fafina. Faka Fafina. Faka Fafina. All right. You stay. That's fine. You can Google it after. Just say someone LGBT, whatever, whatever, and see what come up. All right. But yeah, those realities have always existed so that's mm. why when people talk about say we just come no, no. historically that's not right. the case mm -hmm. yeah 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 so how can someone determine what gender identity or sexual orientation res re resonates most with them i mean most people i think already have a set of feelings mm -hmm. um and it's one once they hear a word and a definition that makes sense to them mm -hmm. that's when they start to realize um oh but this is what yeah, I've been experiencing. Yeah, so mm -hmm. it's not so much of an assigning process. It's mm -hmm. more of a process of saying, all right, me read this and this makes sense for me. Because mm -hmm. you know, so some, so for example, asexual people, um, they might go through and they might say, boy, I mean, I think me gay, because mm -hmm. I really like man. Mm -hmm. But I, mean, I don't like women either, mm -hmm. for example. And so it's like, what is it? And then you hear the term. That's why the whole spectrum. Right. Mm -hmm. And you hear the term and you say, oh, this makes sense for mm -hmm. me. Um, and that's just the reality. For a lot of us, we never had the language, or at least the language that was affirming. Because, you know, Jobby, oh, wait, we can't say certain things, but naturally. Yeah. We are talking the truth and I have All to right. talk. We are talking oh, okay, but want to make sure. Yeah. I don't, I don't know <laughs> so for Jamaica, we always know about Batman, right? Mm -hmm. But most people are not going to readily associate with that word because mm -hmm. it's packed with so much vitriol. It's never said in a good way. way that right. Yeah. People... Well, except in other community. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's like how black people call each other. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So true, because true. of that, there's yeah. this kind of, it take a while for say, all right, I'm going to take me at this because mm -hmm. this, I'm going to say this good and I know me mm, a good smarty. So, mm -hmm. And then you realize, oh, there are other words, and there are other specific realities that yeah. we can begin to talk about. And I think what has happened is an explosion of identities as people try to name their particular experience. Um, however, in Jamaica, until recently, especially at our organization, we never necessarily went past Q mm -hmm. because of what, we, what was showing up in our data. Recently, though, we started seeing more people identifying as intersex for mm -hmm. Jamaicans. So now we're saying, okay, so we, maybe we really do need to be doing more to let intersex people know that we are a space where they can come and right. share their experiences. Mm -hmm. All right, now what is the difference between gender identity, gender expression, and sexual orientation? Okay. I'm going to need one pen for true, true, true. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> well, I have a cute look of video that explains all of this. Okay. Um, however, so gender expression, that's easy. It's about mm -hmm. how you express the gender that you identify with, or, or maybe not necessarily not, yeah, identify with, but how you express mm -hmm. um, gender. So it's the clothes that you wear, um, how you talk, how you walk, all the things packaged into one. It's how you express yourself based on either an understanding of who you are or maybe a try to portray something that you're not. But that's your gender expression. <laughs> okay. um, your gender identity is your deeply felt understanding of yourself. You see, you see yourself as a woman, yes? Yes, I do. You sure identify do. as a woman? I don't. Your identity is a woman, and then specifically because they're going to make the assumption that you are a sad female at birth, mm -hmm. so you are a cis woman, because you talked about having children. Yes. Um, so you would be a cis woman. And mm -hmm. then we talk about sexual orientation is in short, in a short, simple way, I will make a skin catch a fire mm -hmm. in relation to your own gender. Mm -hmm. So me, me a man, man make my skin catch a fire. So me, a, I'm a gay man or a batty man. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I know, you, you know, it's interesting hearing you say that because yeah. a lot of persons, when they use that word, you mm -hmm. know, they... Them no mean nothing good and them mean them want you feel bad about yourself. So right. you know, being able to own the word and not have negative connotations towards it. I, I feel that's empowering, isn't it? For me it is, but I recognize that a lot of people have weird relationships with the word. Mm -hmm. And so in my friend circle and in the people I'm around, we, we don't have a problem saying it, mm -hmm. um, talk, talking about batty people, batty party, batty this, batty that. Mm -hmm. Because we know we're not saying it with venom yeah, uh, and sure. invective. It's, we're saying it with love and it's a, it's 
affirming in a certain way, but in other ways, it, it's not necessarily that. So I don't judge anybody who are looked down on anybody who says, don't say that around me. And sometimes, because me so used to their own people, and me can't just say, hey, but man, this is nothing man that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If I see somebody have like a weird reaction, I say, oh, and this may mean my ear may not necessarily mm -hmm. mean it that way. Because mm -hmm. sometimes people shock, especially if they come to our office and them just hear us say it mm -hmm. and I throw it around. Because that's a space that we create. Mm -hmm. um, and then I say, wait, wait, but isn't this a slur? I mean, said, no, girl, I don't really mean it like that. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Um, but I do find, for me, mm -hmm. and, and this is very important to me, is that I am a Jamaican first. Right. Mm -hmm. And that means I, and I'm, I'm a Jamaican who's had the privilege of living outside of Jamaica right. for mm -hmm. a short time. Mm -hmm. And it mattered to me being Jamaican. And, it, and okay, so I'm going to use that example. I would go to like the to Soho, which is this queer enclave in London. Mm -hmm. um, and them not play the music on my like, them not play the vibes on my like, right? It was just like very white people and the music and all of the things, and I might think that. Um, it's cute for what it does, mm -hmm. but it wasn't my thing. And I had to connect with the peop the black people I know, the Jamaicans I knew. And them said, no man, if you go, yes, so pan the last Sunday at the moment, they have a local club, right? They mm -hmm. run at that part there, and this is the dance I'll play. Mm -hmm. And so while doing that and building a group of friends that that was our ritual, mm -hmm. you come to my yard, we drink up the white rum, we go up on the tube, and then we go to a party and we wind up ourselves. I realized that a big part of my queer identity was bound up in my Jamaicanness. Mm -hmm. um, cause I was a big Batman when I, when I had that. <laughs> and so I say all of that to say... <laughs> no, no, we have a question. <laughs> no, I'm a <sick> of... <laughs> And so for me, I, I'm not going to run away from the only Jamaican word. Mm -hmm. Well, not necessarily only, but the main Jamaican mm -hmm, yeah. word that exists that describes my experience. Mm -hmm. And that's how I feel about it. Because it situates me. And I, and I feel strengthened in that because of my interaction with other people from other cultures mm -hmm. who have these terms that describe their experience. Mm -hmm. So I just think we have to find a way of, over time, if it's not this word, come up with something Jamaican that represents us. Mm -hmm. But, all right, so <laughs> we know the song from Bama. <laughs> <laughs> Mm -hmm. I mean, I know so many persons from the queer community when they hear that. Listen, <laughs> that excitement. And they run out the excitement there. So you're one of those. Absolutely. I mean, I actually was talking about this um, in The Guardian some time ago because mm -hmm. it was a conversation about whether or not Spotify should be removing those songs. And I said, boy, I understand the concern about hate music. Mm -hmm. But the truth is, for a lot of us queer people, when we're in dancehall spaces, with the exception of Lexicon, who recently come up with that. I was just about to ask you about that song. And I love it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But oh, to the exception of Lexicon with Batman Party, and then there was a previous song before that, yeah. there are not many songs that talk about being queer, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, a lot of it has been negative, but what you find is that a lot of us have reclaimed the song. Like, when it come on, we defiantly sing it because it's a way of saying we're here, mm -hmm. I find. And so whenever it goes off, even if you're in our uh, mainstream party or mm -hmm. a party for the community, everybody reel up because it's like saying, well, the song I play, I may enjoy it. Well, we're going to know. We're going to know. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So what are some you know some safe sex practices that might be specific to safe same sex couples that you know may have not been covered in traditional sex education? Oh whew. all right, depends about wait, what are we doing? <laughs> Cause I think that's I where mean, we need you to can start. tell me what we are doing. Tell, <laughs> yeah, tell me the practice and what to do. Yeah. Um well so if we're thinking about the typical um vaginal or or anal sex. I mean, obviously, you're gonna use your your male condoms mm -hmm. um, to put on the penis, um, and then there are things like um, dental dams if you're having oral sex. Mm -hmm. um, although, I'm like gonna be very honest, my lesbian friend them sign them on the plastic. We don't know we're not gonna do. Uh, um, I know there are gloves that you can wear if you're fingering someone. Mm -hmm. um, which are the main things that we talk about? So those barrier methods to yeah. mm -hmm. kind of help people navigate safely any type of penetration um, and all of that. I mean, there, there are other things you obviously can use. I mean, most of, most of those are like more contraceptions than, than anything mm -hmm. else. And of course, you know, you talked about PrEP and trust me, it's a revolutionary drug for a lot of people because mm -hmm. PrEP is a combination method, um, but it does at least take off the pressure for a lot of people right. to always have to 
have the barrier methods around, even though ideally you're using mm -hmm. both together, mm -hmm. but it does take up some of that pressure. And that's something that I think more and more people should explore, especially mm -hmm. with lesbian women who always talk about because when we talk to them, um, they might go off on a hope and a prayer because they're not using the, now the barrier method. They're sorry for telling you. The, let the girl them not eating no nothing, true no bad. <laughs> so me no know we have to find a different way. Yeah. Them not using a female condom. <laughs> And then we can talk about, and I know you guys have touched on this before, like sex toy care and yeah. stuff like that, just mm -hmm. to make sure. And this is also not just for, um, I mean, women or trans people that are right. be, um, using sex toys. And straight couples are using it's that. Straight couples. Man, I mm -hmm. um, get peg, and remember Shade, because I mean, I used to have a podcast, and Shade came on it and talked about in COVID how mm -hmm. um, pegging and anal play became very big during COVID. Big up everybody. <laughs> <laughs> it's the so I'm not talking about me right now. <laughs> uh, but the point is, um, that is also a thing. So we have to talk mm -hmm. about how we're carrying sex toys or we're putting them. Mm -hmm. um, and then we're getting to things like, I don't want to say hardcore, but the other things that people do, which also might include some hand action. Mm -hmm. uh, and we'll figure out what that means. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, this looks like a fist. <laughs> um, and so, and using the necessary loops for mm -hmm. that, using the, the, the kind and a specific hand gloves. Mm -hmm. And if you're into BDSM, just using like body safe mm -hmm. items. If mm -hmm. you're doing like BDSM, and, and use things. the old card where you did use. Yeah, and, and, and use <laughs> actual candles, yeah. body safe candles, yeah. and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Oh, should they teach me all the Okay, are <laughs> you safe candles? Yeah, because yeah, so yeah. you can't just use a regular. Candle can waves, yeah. yeah. You have to get candles specific for mm. that. Those those burn at a lower temperature, so like yeah, over. and oh. cool faster. Yeah, yeah. Shut it, shut it, shut it. 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 How do you go about doing that in the LGBTQ plus relationships? All right, all right. You want to know what them are do or what you're supposed to do? How do you go about <laughs> telling them what them to do and what them supposed to do? You feel like what you're little bit of a Right? I'm going to go cross up. The truth is, I mean, queer people, just like the other Jamaicans, them, we're mm -hmm. really not out there doing nothing right. Let's be very honest. Uh, oh, everybody, okay. I go power up and pray. You know, that's wow. why the Captain Ark is here. <laughs> right. We're going to let you know what are the right practices to protect yourself. I mean, your partner from I will acknowledge though that yes. people are people are way more aware of condoms. People are way more aware of lubes, and that's a big part to Jocelyn and other civil society organizations mm -hmm. who are who have been really good at connecting with the community and giving them those commodities. But the truth is, um, a lot of people aren't at this stage mm -hmm. having the level of conversation that I would expect them to have. Whether it is talking about their sexual health, talking about when was, you know, the last time they, uh, they're doing their regular testing, mm -hmm. talking about um, safely doing certain sex practices. All right. And mega said this because I kind of do have to say this part, um, which is a big thing that particularly gay men, but not just them, other people who receive anal pleasure do, mm -hmm. which is douching and a mm -hmm. conversation we never have in sex, sex ed. And, I expect you know what douching is. Yes, I do. I do. Yeah. But it's well, you have to tell the people that. Yeah, no, I tell you. Oh, okay. So okay. I'm going to come back, right? <laughs> yeah. And you push the water up in there, mm -hmm. and it, you hold it for a little bit, and then you let it out, and you repeat that process till the water clear. And what you're trying to do is make sure that you, you reduce the risk of what we call painting or in Jamaica, curry. Curry. <laughs> <laughs> um, anybody in the middle of sex. Anyone first met your curry? What? Curry? Yeah. yeah, I think more curry. No, the, yeah, no <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Being, I love curry. Stop. Being gay. Do you? Do you? <laughs> Not anymore. Not anymore. That's being gay in Jamaica is learning to to redevelop a relationship with the word curry. <laughs> but you do that. But I think what and I remember. So yeah. in my personal life, I also have like a chosen family, mm -hmm. and I remember having very real conversation with them about. Yeah, how are you 
you guys doing this? Mm -hmm. um, because you have to make sure that the bottles that you're using and the tips that you're using are not sharp because you don't want no internal tears, mm -hmm. no internal mm -hmm. fissures. I mean, I know... Tears make openings through which um, you can get yes, infections. Yeah. infections. But, even, yeah. Yeah, but even, even outside of it, you can have hemorrhoids. You can yeah. have any yeah. type of um, you know, lesions and mm -hmm. stuff like that. So as much as there's this pressure on anal receptive partners to always be clean when they're having sex, and it, it, it's healthier that way in a lot of ways, mm -hmm. you also have to be mindful of, you know, doing the practice properly, doing it safely, um, not damaging yourself um, in the process, and also just checking and make sure that everything all right. Like maybe you shouldn't be having sex if, you, if you've been feeling pain mm -hmm. in that area for a little while, because even if it's not an STI, it could be something else that's damaged mm -hmm. in the anal area that you need to just kind of just get checked out, probably get a little cream for, get a little suppository and yeah. sort that out. I think that's the perfect time to actually mention the fact that Jocelyn and our treatment, we provide anal care services. Mm -hmm. So yeah, things that Glenroy mentioned, mentioning, if you have any issue like that, you can come to Jocelyn and have a doctor look at it for you. I'm not bad. Yeah. Because also in our health connect to your stomach health, it's, it's yeah. levels and layers. Um, but I think though, even before when we talk about what we're talking about, the reality is um, sex ed doesn't prepare us for relationships as mm -hmm. queer people. Because yeah. mm -hmm. the thinking is that you're a man, so you're going to look a woman, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then you're going to navigate those relationships in certain ways and sex ed can do way more to talk about gender balance right mm -hmm. in relationships and how men and women engage but the truth is you don't look about it bad though you're in, a, you're in you're 17 18 you're, yeah yeah just get pan the scene you're mm -hmm. gonna look apart to them and older men are reaching out to you and mm -hmm. you have to begin to ask how do you navigate that and that's also mm -hmm. a part of sex ed am i ready for sex and yeah. am i being put in situations, whether it is through drugs or mm -hmm. alcohol, where I'm able to safely navigate this. This, What does it mean as a gay man to be told that I'm beautiful by this man? Mm -hmm. be in a context and a society where men aren't told that they're beautiful, um, for example. What does it mean to be in a relationship where I am being forced out the closet and I'm not ready for that yet? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, what does it mean that we're sending pictures to each other um, in a context where then if my face is in that or if I'm being videoed during sex, mm -hmm. um, it could then be weaponized against yes, me. Yep. Yeah. Um, and those are some of the conversations that we definitely need to be having with our, well, youth in general, because mm -hmm. this can happen in straight couples. Yeah. But we're definitely not having with queer people where it's one thing for sure, say, I mean, because we're many years removed from Paula. And Paula, big up yourself. Anyway, you're there. you've changed lives. Anybody who don't know what Paula is, you don't you're, know Paula, you're too, too young. young. Too office. young. <laughs> <laughs> but it is not so damaging now for certain sex tapes to be released um, in heterosexual context. Mm -hmm. But if a young person who's dependent on their parent, a sex tape comes mm -hmm. out, um, that could be life threatening. And that's sure. also a part of sex ed. Mm -hmm. You know, am I prepared for the dangers and am I able to negotiate with these people and do I have the support systems because mm -hmm. I've had to be in situations where I went to talk about the apps they made but that's not like a whole different app, app <laughs> by itself <laughs> right <laughs> but yeah am I in situations where because and I'm not judging the girls yeah I'm not judging the girls but darling we have to really talk about when we are traveling for, for the fun. Because if you are across too much, more than two, two parish lines, we really have to start ask, oh, I'm going to reach my yard when this is done. Because if I'm not going to reach my yard when this is done, how oh, it's going to go? Is it safe? Me know, um, me, me know, is that one community one way in, one way out? How mm. um, much people are going to do when I reach? When three men are there instead of the one who I'm talk to, what do There's all of these conversations, yeah. and I've had to be, I've had moments mm -hmm. in my chosen family where all of us are up all night saying, girl, send your location, where they all quickly can leave the house mm -hmm. and get to some level of safety. And these are realities that we face because we have to form relationships and sexual connections differently. Because mm -hmm. we now have the benefit, well, no more so we do. We do have the benefit of safe sp more safe spaces now. Not mm -hmm. everybody. Right, we, absolutely. Um, there's r people still in rural areas still are try find them way through open a prayer. Mm -hmm. But I'm not going to pretend to have a couple night with me, you know, in a past life. 
I'm going to throw me. I'm going to restore me. I'm going to talk to him and ask me if I saw them for turn. I'm going to say, sir, I'm going to really know. <laughs> so we do need to be talking to people mm -hmm. about we are having sex in a clandestine way because of the society that we're in. Yep, yep, mm -hmm. yep, yep. How are you safely navigating this so that even if you're sex, you leave there with your sexual health intact, is your life Life's intact? Right. And that's a, that's a conversation that is still an issue for heterosexual people, but it's a much bigger issue for Absolutely. us. Absolutely. Mm. And, and that, that brings us to my next question. You know, what are some of those misconceptions that persons have about LGBTQ plus relationships and sex, you know, that need to be debunked. I, I mean, I think one of the misconceptions is that we're all about sex. Um, um, and I imagine, I mean, of course, with a young age, you get your fire, that's all you want to do, right? Mm -hmm. um, but I think the reality is a lot of people, they get into relationships, um, but it's more than, it's about the connection and mm -hmm. it's about the bond and it's about the fairy tale of wanting to build life with somebody. Yeah. Um, and so this idea that one were more violent than other people, although sometimes a girl then, but um, <laughs> the, the idea that we're more violent and volatile mm -hmm. um, is not necessarily true. Our relationships are harder, um, in my opinion. Yeah. And I say they're harder because a lot of the things I would have just mm -hmm. shared, which is we have other things for dealing with. You know, the discrimination in society. Yeah. Yeah. Society Within the community. Pressures. Also, mm -hmm. gay men are vain. I have no shame saying this. We are very vain. This is why there's an overemphasis on making sure the bodies are right. And mm -hmm. I think there's a gender thing to this. Mm -hmm. um, they, it's always said, I don't know if I, I don't have data to back it up, but it's always said that men are visual mm -hmm. and women focus on a broader yeah. frame. No, I'm a visual. <laughs> <laughs> Back it. <laughs> that is it. But in a world where men just focus on with them to see yeah. as opposed to the, the person behind. Mm -hmm. There's a extreme pressure on gay men for their bodies to look right, for them to look a particular way. Um, and that has other type of psychological mm -hmm. um, manifestations in terms of body dysmorphia and a lot of other things. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of pressure is put on you. And this idea that by the time you pass 25, you're done, so you have to kind of hurry up and settle down. So they're Ooh. all, listen, I, I, I pass myself by dating at the community. But yeah, I mean, that's a reality um, for us that there, there are these additional pressures in gay relationships mm -hmm. to look a particular way. Um, and then when you put that in a Jamaica, no, because that's globally. globally right. Gay men are vain globally. And I, 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 we will debate anybody upon this. But then, then you're in Jamaica, and then it's a question of how feminine are you? Mm -hmm. um, or what does that mean for your ability to pass and have a relationship that you can have it out loud? Or are you somebody's secret? Are you going to be... Because whereas for women, baby mama drama is optional. For a lot of us, baby mama drama is more the norm. Can you say maybe the man I got a little baby mother you have to go figure out how we can do it? I'm only my thing. So my way of stepmother in our 20s, I'm not really plan to go off work with it. So these are all these like realities mm -hmm. um and honestly except mm -hmm. for like older members of our community which are less and less around because also as you get older you kind of recede from the community mm -hmm. um for the reasons i would have shared mm -hmm. nobody want to be the old bitch at the club um, <laughs> so there's not that font of wisdom a lot of times mm -hmm. for the younger people to kind of know how to navigate and that's why it's so important to me to have a chosen family and check in and say, right, what going right to say? Right, who is this person? Like anybody that's dating any of my chosen children, may for me, may for pass them, may for mm -hmm. say, right, who are you, why your intentions, where you're about, or it go. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Them say me interrogate, me, them tell me for calm down. So me calm down, <laughs> no. But it's so important. I don't get calm at all. I don't know if I'm me, I try to convince, I try to convince yourself. For sure. No, no, no. No, because mm -hmm. somebody did ask me for the interrogation. I said, oh, no, I was a complaint, so I'm not doing that time. I'm not doing it. Um, we did ask a couple questions after, but it was not, not too serious. Usually, it used to be like a courtroom interrogation <laughs> thing. I'm not doing that. But, the, <laughs> mm -hmm. but the point is, mm -hmm. you're not going to, I mean, I only read in my 
previous relationship, that was the first time I ever, for example, told my mom who I was dating. Mm -hmm. And my mother is very supportive. Mm -hmm. um, but most of us are not going to have parents like that. Mm -hmm. Or even if we have supportive parents, they're not going to meet no man, spend no Christmas with no man, I know none of, or no woman, I know none of that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we're already in situations where we're not getting that guidance of somebody who not only is older, but also understands mm -hmm. what we are going through. And so after, uh, you need somebody who's been through some things to say, well, girls, when him said this, I really this in me, and you did not make that man trick, you also, man, I wicked it, if you take your time. Uh, you need you. Hold up, buddy. Say it again. <laughs> say it again. So it doesn't matter. Sorry. It doesn't matter what side of the fences you are on. Man, I wicked. <laughs> yeah, that's what I say. What? <laughs> <laughs> no, you mentioned, there's a term that you, you've repeated a few times. You said chosen family. Yeah. For those who aren't off with that terminology, yeah. can you just expound on that for us? Right. So, I mean, I think RuPaul famously said on one episode of Drag Race that, um, you know, as gay people, we get to choose our families, meaning we build family units um, based on our affinity and love and not necessarily our blood ties. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, 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 it has a historical connection. Anybody who want to know about it, um, go watch the documentary, Paris is Burning. If you're not watching it yet, you know business being in the community, frankly, honestly. <laughs> but um, no, we must know with history. Um, but so that's our thing where mm -hmm. you have a, not everybody gets to benefit from it, but I mean, even in Jamaica, even if it's not a full, what I have, which is a house, mm -hmm. um, people will have a gay mother or a gay father, and that person, it's, it's predominantly among gay men and trans women, but that person kind of takes you under their wing and teach her the ropes. And even that, you have to be a little bit careful because mm -hmm. some of them mother and father here in the community, that mother and father, right? But that's a broader conversation. <laughs> the point is, the role of that person is to get you to understand what, what is safe and not safe to do. And that includes sexual health conversations. And also, make you know, say, all right, they see that one day we come and a, and a, and a new mountain is in the party. You do that to everyone and a little new girl. Then. So you <laughs> stay clear from the one day. And when they see him, or sometimes yeah. when you see them and come, the person just stand up in front of them and say, what do you want with my daughter? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So those are, are some of the ways as a community we've tried to give what we didn't get in school. Mm. Yeah, so I get the support from, you know, community. Mm -hmm. But how can allies better support LGBTQ people, especially when it comes on to, you know, sex education and advocacy? Why? I mean, so I think the biggest thing for allies um, on the sex education part is they have to do their process of learning. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I've been in this community officially, I'm say in, I mean, start meet and talk to other queer people mm -hmm. for, I mean, I can date myself, but for about... Oh, well, wow. I'm about 13, 14 years now. So mm. I'm talking not only from my role as executive director, but years of experience mm. navigating, learning, understanding. And I love sitting at the feet of older people. Um, I love having older friends. Can them teach me? I tell them old things did used to go. Mm -hmm. And I had a lovely best friend who passed on years ago who also was helpful in preparing me for a lot of things. Um, and so for an ally, you really have to sit at somebody's feet and learn the practicalities of what it means to be queer in Jamaica mm -hmm. and do your additional research. research. There's right. a lot of resources out there. Um, JFLAG has a lot of resources. Our, well, JFLAG is our former name, Equality for All Foundation, Equality Jamaica. We have a lot of resources where you can learn about the experiences learned. We have some anal care pamphlets and stuff like that mm -hmm. that you can learn and understand. And I would say you start there to understand what our issues are. We mm -hmm. have our needs assessment that tells us um, what our community is facing. Mm -hmm. We have guides. So we actually have a guide for people who want to support a member in the community who is, might be struggling with mental health issues. Mm -hmm. um, so if you really want to help, you really come and you learn. And then the, in the helping is you use your space safely. Um, and because everybody doesn't need to be an out and loud advocate, and I think right. that's a misconception. My favorite thing is when somebody quietly in their little space, whether it is in their own one little bar and mm -hmm. they work in a one little space, just keeps the door open. And even in a conversation, doesn't leave the burden of explaining our experiences on the queer person in yeah. the room. Because, mm -hmm. and this is where we always go wrong. Identity doesn't mean authority. Mm -hmm. So not because you're queer means they understand everything. everything right. um, and right. so sometimes you do need somebody who 
people not gonna just say, oh, just because you're one of them, why you talk so? Mm -hmm. For come up and add some validity and seriousness to a conversation and balance it off. And that's what an ally can do. And it not for be, you stand up at church and cuss off nobody. <laughs> it could simply be, we had a Christmas dinner, and the one auntie there or the one cousin Whatever. there. Ever. Mm -hmm. You know, you always have the one day. Woo! Mm -hmm. When she start, you just say, hello, hello, hello. We're yeah. not doing it yet, so. Mm -hmm. not, nothing too serious, nothing too extra. You say, hello, world is. Take some Sri Lanka, sit down. And, and she always attack what we're doing. Yeah, yeah. she, that's She's the same one. one. <laughs> she. Yeah. And you just send them on their way. No, I don't have to do that in my family. Because, yeah. yeah. look, I am that auntie. I don't know if <laughs> 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 no, no, for ramp with me. So, you know, I will cope with it. But, you know, yeah. that's, that's allyship. It's mm -hmm. using your power and your privilege um, in this space that you have that power and privilege mm -hmm. to stand up and not maintain the status quo. Mm -hmm. um, and then you can just go about your business and be all right. And you, mm -hmm. you never, I remember um, a conversation I had with, I, no, the first time me and my father and had any type of interaction about my career identity, mm -hmm. um, he, there was some new, I was visiting him and there was some news, something about LGBT people in the US. Just his reaction in that moment when he's like, why don't they just leave them alone? Like, all of this is unnecessary. Mm -hmm. Then my father had never talked about my career. Of course, everybody, I mean, by that time, everybody didn't know where I go on. But it meant so much to me just yeah. hearing him. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that's all an ally needs to do. Just signal that I enough to stress yourself about this. Mm -hmm. um, and it, would be, it can do so much, especially for somebody young, figuring themselves out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That to know, say, you're at least open having that dialogue about what you might be feeling. But how do you deal with the negative reactions? Because when we said about come the discrimination, how do you handle negative reactions or discrimination when discussing your sexuality or relationship with others? I'm going to say, I mean, this is what we say when we have our speakers bureau trainings as an organization. The first thing, if you're going to be open and vocal about advocacy on behalf of this community, mm -hmm. know what your limits and triggers are, right? And know when you need to back out or which conversations not to go in and yeah. which kind of people just not go work for you. Now, I know my limits, right? I know, say, I can't really talk to the, you know, the street kind of man, man, them cars. <laughs> and, it's, and it's really just... We, we just don't relate. Mm -hmm. So it just not going to work, right? Mm -hmm. I will send my other friend and say, ah, you, you go and you tell them this, this, and that. Go on. Do that. Mm -hmm. I know where, my, where I can stand strong and some of them not. And that, that's it for me. You kind of have to know where your strengths are. Mm -hmm. As we say, you know where you're privileged there and use it there. Um, and that way, when somebody says something triggering or says something that's harmful, it doesn't react to you. Because I always say this. People expect the community, I mean, as, as expressive as I am, people expect us to flare up and go Flash off out. and be the stereotype mm -hmm. of, you know, the, you know, the sassy batty man. They expect that. Mm -hmm. And whilst, in many respects, I am the sassy batty man, I'm not going to necessarily be that when I'm talking about real issues Serious or issues. Yeah. talking across our differences. Because mm -hmm. you're not, you're not going to use me for your local if you look a it's moment, can you really just try to get a rise out of me? Mm -hmm. um, and learning not to give people that power will be critical. No, I'm not saying that every queer person that is put in a situation must act like they miss some politician. <laughs> yeah. That is my cross to bear. Mm -hmm. And sometimes there are moments, because I also believe that everybody in your life, including a man, must have a healthy fear of you. People must know so you will lose them, you will lose it and go off. So they must be careful what they must say to you. Um, you look like you're angry, <laughs> a little bit too much. <laughs> um, and, that, and so sometimes you do have to pop off and set boundaries with people. All right. Um, but, I do, but if you are being an advocate, mm -hmm. um, you really have to recognize that in certain spaces that might... Because it's not necessary. I always tell people this. It's never about the person you're having the direct dialogue with. Mm -hmm. It's about the people listening. Yeah. Um, and they mm -hmm. want to see yeah, how you yeah, react yeah. because then they will, they might have follow-up questions that they will never ask while the conversation is happening, but they will mm -hmm. pull you aside and be like, so we well, did say that something here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you want them feeling like, oh, I can make this mistake. I can say the wrong things. Mm -hmm. And so if you're being an advocate, you have to be mindful of that. But if somebody does a fast with you upon the road, you have, I mean, if it is safe to react the way you want to react, react the way you want to react, if it's not, will it, and then they're, 
I would say go to the space, the safe spaces that we have at the community, mm -hmm. get your refreshing, get rejuvenated. And if you want to make a report, JASA collects reports, we collect reports, JFJ collects reports. If the discrimination rises to that level mm -hmm. and you want, and Jane Plus collects reports. So there are options if you want to do something beyond, you know, just in the moment, in mo in talking, the moment reacting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, is it one more question, Chris? Yeah, <laughs> one more. <laughs> <laughs> polyamorous relationship. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and uh, talk to us a little bit about polyamorous mm -hmm. relationships in the LGBT community. How that work? So what you ask me, sir? <laughs> no, yeah, no, no. I mean, when right now no, you're no, a fountain of infamy. You met the one that knows. So. <laughs> no, 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 no. no. So I actually met this amazing woman last year mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. that was in a polyamorous relationship. And what she explained to me is that um, a lot of them mm -hmm. are, um, it just involves a lot of scheduling. <laughs> because, yeah. I'm appear, appear, appear organized. Yeah, you Monday. appear Google Calendar them have to do. <laughs> yeah. Because what it is. You see if that schedule is bad. Right true. Right because, true. Because what it is, because people are imagining a polyamorous relationship is a relationship where you have sex with all different people and mm -hmm. all of them. That's mm -hmm. not it. I mean, you can't always have an open relationship if that is your thing, which is different. Mm -hmm. A polyamorous relationship is a relationship either where you have one person at the center, you have your main partner, and you have other partners that is still your romantic mm -hmm. person that you're engaging with. Mm -hmm. And that romantic partner might have other romantic partners. The lady would explain to me about one chain about eight of them. Oi. I mean, I said, girl, yeah, go on with yourself. <laughs> but... <laughs> <laughs> right, but I was about to consider, I was like, really? Oh, yes. what it, oh friend, it was a spider yeah, web. attention span could have managed. I mean, I said, I'm <laughs> going do this. But really, I said, we did week, you know, yeah, Right? <laughs> and it, but it's a big on communication. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. That's really what it is. Yeah. It is big on everybody understanding what their boundaries are, what their limits are, mm -hmm. what their expectations are, and... Because the truth is, you're getting into the polyamorous relationships, and maybe you start feel things. Maybe you think, all right, that you didn't spend, you didn't look, you could be too happy when you did come back from right. your, the second yeah. wife, yeah, or the second yeah. husband, you had to walk one right there, so. And then the whole way, I have to sit around the round table and say, okay, <laughs> new rules. <laughs> That's what it is. And so people think of it in this kind of mm -hmm. Solomon and his multiple wives yeah. situation when that's not what it is. Mm. It's, it's really a. A decision that one, I maybe you thrive better in have being engaged um, by a range of people, and you do need that. Mm -hmm. But you have to do it in a way that is respectful, that is engaging, and that is safe yeah. for mm -hmm. everybody. Um, and so, I let me see. Have I met? I'd seen online mm -hmm. a, a polyamorous couple. Oh, uh, well, throuple. They're a throuple. Yeah. Um, but I don't think in the Jamaican community I've seen a lot of polyamory. What I've seen a lot of are open relationships mm -hmm. where mm -hmm. people have their partner, but they're allowed to probably have sex with other people or, do, or date other people and so on. Um, so there's, that's what I've seen more of in our community. Mm -hmm. And I think it made more sense because. I'm um, telling you why Jamaica have made it as a concept. That is not a globally understood term. I don't need to recognize that. As a people, we have created a term mm -hmm. called matey. Means say, mm -hmm. we acknowledge there will be somebody else. And then we have the Joe Grant. Right. And you have Joe and Grant, Joe who is a different function. And can make a full day's work, a full, a, 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 is a salaried position. And Joe <laughs> Grant is day's work. Yeah. We come right. and go. Two different <laughs> songs. But the point is, in our culture, we conceptualize this function. Mm -hmm. And so, therefore, maybe as a society, we fun and I think maybe it's an island culture thing, mm -hmm. that we function better in relationships that are not strictly we? monogamous. I'm saying maybe, oh, okay. maybe. <laughs> but, uh, need to migrate, what I reckon. <laughs> <laughs> so, I think that's something that we probably should confront, mm -hmm. given how common... Yeah. People are arguing with the mate is in this country. Everybody remember, remember when Hurricane Matthew did come and the lady did meet the lady in the supermarket and did say, uh, I'm not going to mention the name right now. No, I have to call the name because that's the only way I can no, remember. No, the name. <laughs> no, because <laughs> it's been years that lady deserves some rest. But no, remember, she doesn't <laughs> look But remember, she followed her and said, I see I have all the pictures, I have the pictures. Oh, yes, that and lady. When my mother died. Oh, <laughs> yes. 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 All right, make sure yes. 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 Exactly. <laughs> but the point is mm -hmm. that it, all of that, mm -hmm. 
um, is a reality in our culture that we've confronted. Ladies are saying too much fun about it. Mm -hmm. We're not really. And why, if I, if I wish one thing, Pandis, and I hope Muma say, please come back to the dance hall. I have personally oh, been yeah. missing you, but we'll move. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I think most of us are missing. <laughs> but yeah, I think we probably need, really need to reassess, mm -hmm. not for everybody, but reassess how we force monogamy, strict monogamy at least, on everybody. Hmm, question, something to think about. Something yeah, to next. think about. Right? You know? <laughs> next week or so. Yeah, yeah, Again. definitely, definitely. Yeah. So, you know, that was a, a, a really informative. Oh, well, informative. That's the word. It was Boy, an informative episode. You know, real sex ed, LGBTQ plus sex uh -huh. ed tonight on Just Love the Dark. And of course, we want to thank... Glenroy Murray. No, but this is nice, man. We, nice can't, man. we can't bring him back. Well, <laughs> 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 we'll talk to the producer. We'll talk to the producer. We'll see what we can do. <laughs> Thank you, Glenroy Murray, Executive Director at e uh, e Equality <laughs> for All. <laughs> for Thank for you so much. For being on Just Love to Dark tonight. Reminding you, Jamaica Aid Support for Life provides free HIV and syphilis testing, free condoms, free lubes, free PrEP. And if you're living with HIV, we provide free HIV treatment, care, and support. So you can contact us at 876-925-0021 and get whatever service you need. Crystal, we have to say to the people here. Um, make sure you're tune in next week. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Tonight was very informative. Thank mm -hmm. you so much. Thank you for having me. I really had fun. Right. Yeah, we, awesome. we did too. <laughs> and right now, I don't want to for the next week. <laughs> <laughs> for, it, for the rest of my life, I'm done with curry. <laughs> and on that note, back to you, Carl. On that <laughs> note, people, thank you for tuning in to Jessel After Dark. We'll see you next week, Wednesday, 8 o'clock, where what we can't discuss during the day, we discuss, we discuss after, after dark. dark. See you next week. Good night. <laughs>